animation used to be the realm of JavaScript. Now, in modern browsers, we can animate elements in CSS. The at keyframes block and animation properties allow us to specify what gets animated and when. In this episode, we'll look at the kinds of animations that are suited to CSS, the concept of specifying a series of keyframes, and finally, the way these keyframes are combined with animation settings to bring the page to life. As CSS animations don't have the deepest browser support, they're best suited to visual flair rather than being a key part of the page content or design. Animations can run one or more times or loop infinitely. It's also possible to add multiple animations to the same element. A great example of multiple looping animations can be seen on the A to Z CSS homepage. Animations can be triggered in CSS as soon as the page loads, after a delay, or via some kind of state-based change like hover, focus or active, which we looked at in episode 8. CSS animations can also be started and stopped in JavaScript by toggling the animation play state property. We'll look at the other animation properties and syntax a bit later on. In order to animate an element, or a selection of elements, we need to specify a series of keyframes. The most basic form of keyframe animation goes from one set of styles at the beginning to another set of styles at the end, over a certain amount of time. During the animation, the styles between keyframes are automatically calculated by the browser, a process known as tweening. Each keyframe is defined as a style block of CSS properties that will be applied to any element that uses that set of keyframes. Additional keyframes can be specified using a percentage syntax. If the animation duration was 10 seconds, over the first 7.5 seconds, the font size of the element would grow to 100 pixels, and then over the next 2.5 seconds, it would shrink back down to 10 pixels. It's worth noting you can specify as many properties and as many keyframes as you'd like. When the keyframes have been defined, they're ready to be used in conjunction with the animation name property. There's a series of animation properties to configure your animation as needed. Animation name specifies the block of keyframes to use. Animation duration specifies the time the animation lasts. Animation delay specifies any delay before the animation starts. Animation iteration count specifies the number of times to repeat. Animation direction specifies the direction. Animations can play forwards, in reverse, or alternate back and forth. Animation play state allows the animation to be paused and resumed. Animation timing function determines an acceleration curve of how the animation plays between the keyframes. Finally, animation fill mode determines how styles are applied before and after the animation. These eight properties can be combined into a shorthand animation property as follows. The only required properties for an animation to be visible at least once are animation name and animation duration. Let's have a look at a practical example. We can create a ball using equal width and height box with border radius set to 100%. We can make the ball bounce up and down by absolutely positioning it and animating the top or bottom values over time. We can give the ball a bit more realism by squashing it at the bottom of the animation before having it travel back up at a slightly slower speed. We can also make the ball move across the screen by adding a second animation that animates the left property of the ball. These can be comma-separated so they're both applied to the same element. 
To make it appear as though the ball bounces slowly across the screen, we can increase the duration of this second animation. CSS animations are not supported in IE9 or below, or Opera Mini.